Today we're going to check out another mechanical keyboard from Drevo. Drevo has honestly been one of my favourite budget brands because they deliver products that are unique to the budget market. Opening up the box we have the keyboard itself, a user manual, a USB Type-C cable and a Drevo sticker. But here it is, the Drevo Joy Use. And well, it is as slim of a mechanical keyboard that has an actual enclosure, as you will see. It features an all aluminium case construction in this silver finish and holding it in the hands and it does feel pretty good. There is some flex when you twist it, which is kind of to be expected and it's of course quite light, but not as light as you would expect coming in at about 535 grams. So about as heavy as a plastic 60% board or the HHKB Pro 2. The aesthetic is quite minimal and sleek this keyboard is all about thinness. So the front and side bottom edges are rounded to make it appear thinner, which is probably the reason for the bezel. And this is also a floating key design to again accentuate the slimness. However, like many laptop keyboards, there is an indent in the top plate to sync the actual keys by about one millimeter. The sides also do light up, so we have a strip of white lighting on each side. And then for this section here, the logo lights up. The white keycaps match the case fine and the legends are very neat and tidy for a backlit keyboard with a clean typeface. I'm also happy that it's a nice clean white backlight which complements the rest of it perfectly. The keycaps also have this interesting design where half of it is that translucent white plastic that lets light through so the sides of the keycaps glow which then in my eyes makes them appear flatter as it looks like there's less depth. And these keys are uniform in profile, so it's just flat from the sides. Although the keycaps are very slightly scooped, but essentially flat. Again, very similar to a laptop keyboard. Looking at the bottom of the keyboard, and it's also very simplistic, and this is still aluminium as well, and we can see that there are no flip up feet, as we only have these six rubber feet for non-slip. So this is the angle that you're stuck with, which is created by the back section being slightly thicker as it also houses the battery. The cool thing about such a low profile keyboard is that it's quite comfortable to use while resting your wrists on the table, since there isn't much of an angle anymore. On their website, they state that it is a mere 21 millimeters thick. I measured it to be at about 22 to 22.5, at its thickest point when on the table, which is very thin for a mechanical keyboard, being about as half as thick as most standard MX boards. Now to the layout. This has 96 keys, so for reference, a standard full-size ANSI keyboard has 104. So we get more of the primary functionality of a full-size keyboard, but in a much more compact form factor. This is very alike to a more normal 96 key keyboard, that is more of an enthusiast type of layout. To make this, we essentially remove the section that is normally between the main area and the numpad. So now our numpad is right up next to the main area, and then our arrow keys are squeezed in over here. To accommodate the arrow keys, our bottom row has smaller one unit keys and a smaller spacebar. And our right shift key is shorter. However, none of these changes had any real negative impact on me personally. But what's great about this layout is that we get to keep the numpad, which is something some people can't go without. However, this has also been altered. The main thing being is that it is only three columns wide and therefore does not have the big plus and enter keys. The plus key has been moved up to the top right and the other symbols have been shifted one key to the left. I'm not a very heavy numpad user, so I can't really assess the severity of these changes but I can imagine that someone who does use the numpad often will have to change their habits and muscle memory to adapt to these new positions. Another quite puzzling choice is the non-standard key stagger. If we look at the caps lock key, it is a two unit key rather than the normal 1.75 U key. That means that this row has been moved across to the right by 0.25 of a unit, where one unit equals one alpha key. That may not seem like much, but it can be a problem depending on how you type. And it also did make the enter key smaller by just that 0.25, but that wasn't really a problem for me at all. 
And lastly, the keyboard is physically smaller because the keys are closer together. So much like many laptops, it is a bit compressed, which again can get some getting used to. All these changes would be terrible for keycap compatibility as there's a bunch of non-standard keys, but since aftermarket keycaps aren't a thing for low profile switches yet, this isn't a real issue in my opinion. To take off the keycaps, it's better to use a wire keycap puller. Since there's no real gaps between the keycaps, the plastic ring pullers don't work too well. Looking at the keycaps, and they're made from ABS plastic and are double shot, which is clearly shown by the two pieces of plastic, so the legends will never fade away. Looking at the stem, and it's of course only suitable for the kale type of low profile switches. Cherry will soon have their own low pro switches with their cross stems, but those are completely different. And that reveals the main feature of the keyboard, which gives it that super slim look, the low pro switches. Drevo used to offer this in their own Drevo branded switches, which I have in my non-retail sample board with some blacks. However, those were pretty bad. So they made the move to just use the normal K low profile switches. These are semi-based on the old Cherry ML switches, however, they have a slightly different design and are not compatible with their keycaps. The switches have a height of 11.5mm, which is quite a bit shorter than the standard MX key switch, which is about 18.5mm tall. What may surprise you though, is that it still manages to have a total travel distance of 3mm, which is 75% of the standard 4mm and it has a pre-travel distance of 1.5 mils rather than the normal 2 mils, which is again 75%. So you're not missing out on too much in regards to travel, but you save a lot of space. And this creates a very interesting experience. Even though it is 75% of the travel, it feels very very short, and you could easily think that this is half the travel as it feels so shallow. I have the Kale Red Low Pro switches which have an operating force of 50 grams and I'm really glad that I got this retail version as the Drevo Blacks which are also linear just feel terrible. They have an unsatisfying spring which made them feel too heavy and mushy for the short throw distance. The Kale Reds however feel a lot better in my opinion. They're not particularly smooth but they're smooth enough for the amount of travel you experience and the lighter spring helps in making them feel a touch sharper. I also have a clicky low profile board and I must say that these kale linears feel somewhat unimpressive in my opinion. The travel is just too short to appreciate the linear nature, with the bottom out being quite abrupt but also quite soft. I do think that the clickies are a different story and provide a unique and satisfying experience, but with these I honestly much prefer typing on my ThinkPad keyboard However, for laptops, those are great keyboards. I still prefer this Drevo board over many other shorter travel laptop keyboards, such as this MacBook with scissor switches. I haven't been able to try the tactiles, but I would think they probably would be better. It's quite a harsh evaluation, but again, this is my personal opinion, and everyone is different, and you might even like them. So that's how they feel, but in regards to performance, this is a very similar situation to key switches like the Cherry MX Speed Silvers. I do feel that the decreased travel allowed me to have quicker repetition. Whether this will help in game, I'm not so sure. Now to its other big feature, the wireless Bluetooth capabilities. This keyboard does not come with a wireless dongle of any sort, 
so you will be relying on your device having Bluetooth. Unfortunately, I don't have that on my desktop PC, so I did most of my wireless testing on my brother's MacBook and my Android laptop. First of all, there are two modes, being the wired and wireless modes. And to switch between them, we have to press Fn plus tab. So to connect to a device, we hold the Fn key and the B key for a few seconds, and the B key will start rapidly blinking, and you just find your keyboard in your Bluetooth settings. These two modes are independent, meaning that if you plug it in while in wireless mode, it will charge the keyboard, but it will not be in wired mode. Therefore, we can use this on two devices, one being wired and the other wireless, and pressing Fn plus tab to switch between them. This is using Bluetooth 3.0, whereas their Drevo Calibre is using 4.0, and with normal use such as surfing the web and writing this script, it worked absolutely fine. There wasn't really any noticeable latency or lag issues, at least that's how I felt. Even when typing fast, letters didn't get mixed up, which can happen with slower keyboards. For games, I'm not 100% sure. Since I wasn't able to use this on my desktop PC, I was limited in what games I could play. However, I found no real issues. I'm not a pro gamer or anything, but this seems pretty fine to me. Unfortunately, I don't really have a quantitative measurement to give, so this may be much more noticeable to someone else, but I can imagine there will be some sort of delay, obviously in comparison to the wired mode. And with wireless capability, we do have a 1000mAh battery to power this guy. On Drevo's product page, they state that it will last for 50 hours without the LEDs on and 5.9 hours with the LEDs on. And to help save power, the keyboard goes to sleep after 60 seconds of inactivity. In my testing, which was loosely tracked, I managed to easily get more than the claimed 6 hours of proper lights on use per charge with maximum brightness. I would say I normally got over 10 hours of active use and maybe even more. That is excluding sleep time, so I tried to keep the keyboard from sleeping due to inactivity and minus the downtime. So with these times considered, it would basically require one charge per day with very heavy use, so like at an office or something where you're constantly using it, or about one charge per three days with moderate usage, which would be a few hours a day. So that's more of a home usage scenario. Or even longer with light usage with maybe a week or two, although I can't back that up as I never tried keeping it on for that long without plugging it in. These times can also be slightly extended if you were to lower the brightness on the backlighting. I couldn't find out much out there on other people's experiences with battery life, so these numbers are based purely on my experiences and are kind of ballpark figures. Taking the keyboard apart is simple with just a couple of Phillips head screws and it comes apart in two main pieces. Here's the bottom piece which is made from 1.2mm thick aluminium. As with many similar cases that aren't milled, it has a plastic piece which provides the standoffs and to keep the thickness down, the plastic has cutouts for each key switch. We have the USB-C port and also our 1000mAh battery which is shielded by a piece of plastic to prevent punctures from the pins. Here's the other piece, and it's again using 1.2mm thick aluminium. The PCB looks clean with clean solder joints. These particular switches are PCB mount with the extra prongs, but the pins have a different orientation compared to a standard MX switch. We have some small SMD LEDs on the side for that side glow, and we also have some good access to the bottom of the stabilizers to maybe get more lube in. Overall, it's another fine addition to the Drevo lineup. Drevo have delivered more exotic layouts and products to the budget market. What's also impressive is seeing Drevo branch away from the gaming tag and market and provide a keyboard more oriented for office and work use. And it's proven to be quite popular as it's out of stock nearly everywhere. I think that this is a very flexible and accessible layout that many people will be able to use. It still has the dedicated arrow keys and even the numpad, but in that very compact form factor that is even smaller than a regular 10 keyless mechanical keyboard. In fact, it's about the same size as this 65% keyboard. 
and this makes it extremely portable. I think slimness is more important than the actual footprint when putting it into a bag, so it's just like slipping in another book. I tried it on Windows, Mac OS and Android and had no issues, although when using it with a Mac, you will be missing the Mac specific legends. The other big feature of course is the low profile switches. I'm happy they made the move to the Kale low pro switches. I feel that the linear reds will be the weakest of the three. I think the clickies are a wonderful switch and I hope to try the tactiles one day. On the other hand, they are reasonably quiet, being quite similar to laptop keyboards and that may be the reason to avoid the blues because they are loud but they are good with the click button mechanism cr creating that crisp clicky sound and feeling. The build is quite nice with the aluminium enclosure and I personally think it is quite a pretty looking keyboard with its very slim silver case, white side lighting, keycaps and backlighting. With all these features in quite a stylish keyboard, I definitely think it's one to consider if it ticks all the boxes for you.